What's going on YouTube back here with another video today. We're going to be talking about my dual Xeon Hackintosh. As you know, I picked this up about a month ago. Uh, if you haven't watched those videos, definitely go watch them. Um, some of the specs of this machine, it has two Xeon E5 2643 version 1 CPUs, 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, a Radeon RX 580 8GB card that was carried over from my 2010 Mac Pro, uh, 256 gigabyte uh, PCIe SSD, as a uh, Samsung SM951, and uh, that's about it for right now. Um, those CPUs are 3.3 gigahertz um, quad cores, and there's two of them, so a total of eight cores and 16 threads for the both of those. And yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about the plans I have for this machine over the next couple of months, you know, what's next for this machine, uh, what happened to the Mac Pro, and things of that nature. So I have a list right here. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and start off with the first thing, uh, RAM. I'm going to be adding another 16 gigs of RAM. Another 16 gigs of RAM, I'm going to bump it up to 32 gigs, um, and that should make for a perfect uh, amount of RAM for Final Cut Pro. Next up, USB 3, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Those things should have been first, and I think they're going to come before the RAM, actually, because I don't really use more than uh, 16 gigs as of right now, but when I start uh, editing more and more, you know, that will go up. So... Right now, how I run this machine, I have it uh, Ethernet running out of the MacBook Pro and into here. Uh, this does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Uh, there's no network on here, so I have to run my internet from my MacBook Pro and right here. And it gets annoying having to keep my MacBook Pro like literally right next to the machine at all times. It gets annoying. So that's definitely going to happen soon. I'm going to go with a, uh, I think like a Broadcom Wi-Fi card and then a uh, like a USB 4.0 dongle from Amazon or something like that. Alright, uh, getting into the big stuff, um, this is a kind of a controversial one that I really wasn't sure about if I was going to do or not, but the CPUs. The CPUs I'm looking at, the I think they're the E5-2667, um, yeah, E5-2667, these go for about uh, $100 a piece. Now, this is probably one of the most expensive parts that I was uh, looking at buying for this machine, um, and I'm skeptical because, you know, in Final Cut Pro, they take advantage of most of the cores, as you know. But um, when you have more than eight cores, single single thirty performance starts to take a hit drastically of what I've seen on most uh, single threaded workflows. Because this machine is not a strictly video editing machine. This is also a um, this is also a productivity machine. You know, uh, doing Word documents, browsing the web, email. It does everything a normal computer does. Just has enough power to get a four K display and. Uh, edit 4K video, which is also something that this, this machine does. So, uh, adding dual 2667s, um, you know, it would I would still have decent single threaded performance, but then again, you know, it's gonna be 12 cores at only 2.9 gigahertz, which really isn't that bad when you look at it. But only time will tell, and uh, we can test that out when the time gets there. So, I already went over the CPU, RAM. And I think I ran over the network and stuff already. Next up is a graphics card. Now this is something I've mulled over in my mind for a long time. Even when I had the Mac Pro, it was a very, very, very tough decision to make. Do I want to go with the reliability of a NVIDIA card or have the open seal performance of an AMD card and take a little bit less performance hit on Final Cut with the NVIDIA card? Uh, eventually, I chose the AMD car because, you know, reliability issues really aren't a thing with the RX 500 series of graphics cards, what I've heard so far, uh, and what I've experienced so far with the RX 580. So, um, I have kind of three different options I'm looking at. Um, first option is adding an NVIDIA card in addition to this, because I do also edit with uh, Adobe Premiere uh, when certain projects need uh, a little bit more intensive color grading and stuff like that, so I have to use Premiere and the Metri. Um, I'm thinking about adding, you know, a, a cheaper car because, you know, CUDA acceleration is great, but I don't really need something like a 980 Ti or a Titan. Uh, I'm looking to say under the $200 range in that because um, OpenSeal really isn't as powerful as CUDA acceleration within Adobe Premiere. So maybe like a 1050 Ti, a 1060, um, or something older like a 780, 780 Ti, or even an old uh, GTX Titan. Uh, something under around to two hundred dollars range, under at or under two hundred dollars. What I'm trying to say, um, that's something I'm definitely looking at in terms of adding another card. Or I could uh, get rid of the RX 580 
and go with a Vega 56, which is also really, really good and Premiere, in Premiere and Final Cut Pro. So those are options as well. Definitely gonna be adding a USB 3.0 because the USB 3.0 on the motherboard does not work uh, as of right now, unfortunately. Um, audio works, Ethernet works, all that's great. Um, all that is just fine and dandy. No, I don't think I need to talk about anything else. Uh, I guess for storage, I'm gonna add another uh, solid state drive to this thing. Um, I'm gonna add a SATA card because this has an internal SAS controller. Uh, it's not recognized by Mac OS. I do not know how to get it working uh, on Mac OS. So that is something that I will have to take into consideration moving forward in my storage. Cause I'm gonna have a one terabyte Western Digital Blue in there right now as my storage drive. And then my primary boot drive is a PCI Express SSD. So that's, you know, that doesn't use SATA or SAS. Um, but that's pretty much it. I don't really think I have anything else to talk about in terms of upgrading. You know, like I was saying, Vega 56 is an option. Um, adding an NVIDIA card is an option. Or, you know, if I have a lot of money later on down the road, uh, after the PowerPC challenge and after the PowerMax G5 is done being built, um, we could possibly do another RX 580. That's on the table as well. Uh, anything to give me the kind of best of both worlds performance between Premiere and Final Cut, even though I don't use Premiere as nearly as much as I used to when I first started off um, video editing and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's still a nice option to have if I decide to go back to Premiere or if a certain project needs Premiere. Moving on, I'm going to talk about some of the issues I've had with this machine and how I could possibly remedy those situations. So the first real issue I had with this machine is power management, the CPU power management. This thing does not turbo boost. It runs at a fixed speed of 3.27 gigahertz I think um, and that's issues that, that can be worked out later I have not been able to figure it out for the life of me um, it's just running at 3.27 gigahertz I was going to make a video comparing this to the uh, 2010 Mac Pro and I still am I have the benchmarks lined up it's just that they're not really as accurate because the Mac Pro can turbo boost and this cannot so you know it, it's kind of sort of apples to apples this is a new architecture anyway but um, that's one gripe I have with this machine. Second gripe, you know, you have eight SATA ports on an SAS controller, and that's what this has, but you can't use any of them within Mac OS, so that's another issue I've had with this machine. And uh, I think that was it. I think that's all the issues I really have with this machine, other than the turbo boost is a major one. And that's it. Yeah, I think I've rambled on enough. Those are my plans for the hacking costs as of now. Um, I don't really think I left anything else out. Um, I pretty much went over the entire Pack and toss if it, in its entirety. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a kind of rambly video, but um, uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.